which leads me to our next topic, cloud again, but it's also vast 5G implications and what's going on with Azure for operators. And currently, one of their major initiatives is building 5G modern connected applications, uh, particularly at the edge. And I think we all understand that the cloud is swiftly expanding into a highly distributed uh, computing uh, fabric that is broadly available and powered by you know, the network infrastructure, as well as uh, an evolving new approach to application and connectivity. Uh, that is, again, what we already touched on, a lot more flexibility, being able to potentially build microservices, use things uh, like uh, network slicing and so forth. And what we're seeing with the modern connected applications are that they're taking advantage of this distribution, but also lower latencies that 5G introduces, as well as network intelligence. So their applications uh, are having a lot more awareness about you know, what is going on with the network but more importantly, uh, certainly the IT over, uh, overseers, administrators will have more information about you know, how to optimize, for example, industrial IoT application as a result of this. But it also it's uh, pushing compute power out further into the edge. So whether you're talking about a device or you know, hard to reach areas such as rural areas uh, or you know, maritime areas and so forth, Azure is now taking this extra step, Azure for operators, to really make you know, 5G more readily available. So I think this is a good move on their part. And they have two key components uh, that make up uh, the solution. There are others, but the two main ones that they're kicking off with is called Azure Public MEC, or Multi-Access Edge Compute. And uh, it's looking at leveraging the operator's public 5G network, thus Azure Public MEC. And this allows developers, I believe, to be more successful in developing applications that leverage the public network. So that certainly has consumer uh, applications uh, in mind, but also certainly on the enterprise and business side. So for example, something that we've heard a lot about extended reality, including augmented reality and, and virtual reality, I think can get, gain more traction. And I think we're seeing virtual reality actually being successfully paired with uh, emerging digital twin uh, uh, technologies, for example. So this is something I think that we'll be definitely keeping a close eye on in terms of how these applications are gaining traction, but certainly Azure for operators' role in this. Now, the other part is Azure Private MEC, and that brings the power of the cloud to the enterprise's own infrastructure, thus you know the private nature of it. And so this allows enterprises to combine cloud managed edge servers, uh, networking capabilities, services, and that also gives them pretty much the control that they definitely prefer in terms of being able to have the security across their entire uh, network implementation, including the 5G part. And that's why we see you know, private networks getting more traction Oh, um, over the last uh, uh, couple of years plus. Now, it's, there's been some overhyping of it, but I think 5G private networks are definitely going to be growing uh, steadily and becoming a more important part of the overall 5G picture and ecosystem. And with that, uh, Steve, from your perspective, how do you see, again, you know, the cloud playing a role here in terms of you know, moving 5G forward? And for that matter, you know, uh, Azure's uh, proposition here. Well, I mean, we've seen the cloud probably over the first 10, 15 years be that horizontal layer providing computers a service. We've seen the sovereign clouds now develop. We're also seeing industry-specific clouds. IBM's been making some traction in this space with financial services. We're seeing, as you're here, focus on the telco space. So I think you're going to start to see more industry-specific clouds, whether that's regulatory frameworks, whether that's technology architectures, kind of putting a spin on those platforms provided by the big cloud providers, uniquely tuned for the demands of specific um, industries or use cases. And we're seeing it as you're obviously made that step with operators. I think then, so so on trend starting to see that sort of industry specific specificity from the cloud providers i think the other piece and the piece that was interesting that you discussed is kind of what's happening out at the edge 
we're seeing a, a sort of confluence of factors there. It's not only having the 5G technology, it's having the sensors, it's having the management frameworks and the automation. We've seen some good steps forward with lightweight Kubernetes distributions being able to be tuned for the edge. So I think what you're seeing is a combination of factors coming together. The sensors are getting better. The management planes getting better. The networks getting better. So as you're stepping into that space and doing more for a 5G infrastructure with this new Azure for operators, makes perfect sense to me. You're going to want that edge deployment, whether that's private Wi-Fi, private Wi-Fi, private 5G, you know, whatever the end technology is out of that edge, you're going to increasingly want that connected back ultimately to a cloud pr platform. So I think Microsoft getting closer to the edge and the, and almost all the way out to the far edge makes perfect sense for me. It's a good move. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see the partnerships. We talked about Nokia and Red Hat. I think Microsoft's going to have to partner in that space, and it's a different set of partners. Um, but obviously, Microsoft's got those partner networks and can make that work. So bullish on this. I expect to see more. Amen. Yeah, no, I think I, uh, that is exactly right. Uh, and yes, uh, Microsoft clearly has a portfolio that is well suited for advancing uh, the edge cause, as we can characterize it. Uh, certainly when it comes to AI, uh, Microsoft has the technology and the assets to leverage that and making uh, the edge more effective for 5G use cases. And I think, uh, yeah, this is a good example of Microsoft being able to drive more of what can be called use case networking on the enterprise side uh, that is a bit better able to support industrial automation, uh, robotics, uh, et cetera, all the things that I think are capturing uh, you know, not just the imagination, but also very practical, pragmatic uh, use cases that enterprises uh, deeply value. And having a cloud partner that understands the edge and bring uh, the resources to optimize the edge will be a, a difference maker as uh, 5G matures and private 5G becomes uh, all the more mainstream. And on that, well, I, th I think it's interesting. You touched on AI in that space. Mm -hmm. I think getting lightweight AI as far out towards the far edge as possible is starting to become more realistic. Some of these models are getting smaller. The container management is getting down to single node rather than the three node. You know, you're starting to see a confluence that there's, you were seeing a lot more of the hardware vendors put more compute capacity and capability further out into the edge. You know, I was out with Lenovo a few weeks back looking at their portfolio at the far edge. You know, so I think it's a confluence of some of these factors. I think AI is going to get further out towards the edge. And I think Microsoft obviously have got a role to play in that given, you know, they're one of the leaders in the AI space. Yes, and I think uh, there's uh, definitely a, a symmetry here uh, that uh, Microsoft uh, has a competitive advantage of or some other players, not all the players, but certainly this is something mm -hmm. I think will be to their uh, competitive advantage. And certainly this is the summer of AI, so everybody is has an AI play uh, right now, but we know that Microsoft basically played a major role in triggering uh, the keen interest in AI, specifically generative AI, back in uh, the February timeframe. And uh, this is something that will be with us for the foreseeable future. So, you know, this is, uh, we're obviously going to keep t uh, an update on AI's impact on 5G and vice versa. And uh, so this is exciting times. This is uh, really good. And the two of them can definitely, I believe, drive, uh, help drive private 5G, accelerate its uptake.